Hey everybody, we're back doing another cooking demo. So today we are going to make ratatouille. What is ratatouille you ask? It's a vegetable stew. We're gonna be using fresh eggplant, which we've already cut up. And that's one medium eggplant. We're gonna use two medium sized zucchini that have been cut up into half moons. We're gonna slice one medium onion up and then we also have roasted red bell peppers that comes in a jar. And you can get these um, several different places. We got it at um, Trader Joe's, roasted bell pepper. Um, you can also get it at the normal grocery store. This one's a little bit bigger, so you wouldn't have to use the whole jar. We're also going to use some garlic and also some diced tomatoes. It calls for a 28-ounce can. I don't have a 28 ounce can, so I'm gonna use two 14 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to get our um, our uh, instant cooker here. You could call it an Instapot. This is a pamper version version of it. And we're going to turn that on sear or saute, whichever yours does. Once it's turned on, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. We talked a little bit about olive oil um, in my ragu class. This is a local olive oil made from Jacuzzi um, Olive Press um, in Sonoma. Um, you can get that, you can buy it in bulk. It's, it's really great, it's very fresh. So once we get the olive oil in there, I'm gonna start off with the things that take a little bit longer to break down. So I'm gonna start off with the zucchini. I'm gonna stick it in the bottom there. And I'm going to let that saute. And it's probably going to take a couple minutes because I didn't have this all warmed up for you before I started. So I just want to break these apart, make sure that they're all coated in some of that oil that I put in the bottom of the pan. And that should start sizzling soon. And then I'm going to also add in the eggplant. I love eggplant. I'm just afraid to cook it. Every time I try to do like eggplant parmesan, it never turns out very well for me. I like this because I don't have to bread it and fry it. <laughs> it just cooks down like the zucchini does. So it, it gives great flavor um, to the dish. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna let this cook down a little bit for about four minutes. So in this, uh, recipe. I'm also going to use a vegetable seasoning. I talked a little bit about it in my last recipe. I'm using Vegeta. Let's see. Get you in the camera there. Um, you can get this on Amazon. You can get it at World Market. It's just a vegetable seasoning. So instead of adding salt, I'm going to add this. It gives it a little bit more flavor. The other thing that I'm going to do in here that I did similar to my ragu recipe is I'm going to use some fresh herbs. I'm going to use rosemary and thyme. You can buy these in the grocery store, just fresh herbs. And I'm gonna wrap them in a bundle like I did in the last one. So you can do this recipe just with the vegetables. Um, I like to make it a one pot meal. How can you do that? I like to add uh, just already cooked meatballs. You can go to Trader Joe's, you can get um, meatballs um, in your deli section, but get ones that are already cooked. Because all you're going to do is you're going to reheat it in there. Um, I can Trader Joe's has some in the frozen section. What, because they're already cooked, I feel comfortable putting something frozen in there. If it's not completely cooked, you should not do that. You should make sure it's completely cooked before it goes in. Because there's no guarantee in the short amount of time that it's going under pressure that it's actually going to cook that meat for you. What I'm choosing to put in today are some chicken meatballs. These are Adele's. They're caramelized onion. Um, I like using chicken or turkey because it seems to be lower in fat. If you try to use beef meatballs, they tend to use the really fatty beef to make the meatballs. So um, I tend to kind of shy away from that unless I make it myself. Um, you could make meatballs and bake them in the oven and then um, freeze them and then put them in this recipe later. But I think you can hear it starting to sizzle. The um, eggplant starting to get kind of aromatic in here. I can smell it. So we're going to let that cook down just a little bit more. Um, 
some of these vegetables um, tend to cook a little bit, take a little bit longer to cook and break down the zucchini and the eggplant. Onions, because there, there's a lot of water in them, they tend to kind of cook a lot faster. So I try to put those in them towards the end. So we're going for about three or four minutes here. I think we're probably at our four minute window. So we're going to go ahead and add in, this is sliced onion. This is a medium onion that's been sliced. And I'm just mixing it up in here so that it can get some um, time on the heat at the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to let that cook for another four minutes or so. Um, I also have some garlic in here. It's called for two garlic. And I told you before, I use the um, garlic that's already been uh, chopped up that I buy at Costco in a really huge container. So I'll use a little bit more than what it calls for. But you just want to mix it up in there. You don't want to burn the garlic. All you're trying to do is cook down the vegetables a little bit. Give them a little bit of a sear on them. I'm going to let that chill a little bit. And while that's doing that, I'm going to wrap up uh, my herbs. So I think I showed you guys how to do this before. I have my food grade twine that I've cut up into a strip here. I'm going to take my rosemary, which are the longer bunches, and then I'm gonna take some of my thyme, which are the little smaller leaves. Of course, this one's all attached. And then I'm gonna put some more rosemary on the outside so it kind of tucks it in and I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to wrap it around there. And this is going to give, give it an herb bundle that I can put in here. And it's going to add more flavor to my ratatouille. So I'm going to tie off the end in a knot. And I can hear everything sizzling. All right, I'm going to put these guys away. Give this another stir. And I can see that the onions are starting to break down a little bit. And that's good because you don't want a crunchy onion. You want a cooked onion. All right. Once that's cooked for about four more minutes, I think we're coming up on that pretty close. We're going to add in the um, chopped um, bell peppers. Now, these are roasted bell peppers, so they're nice and soft. They're um, in a kind of a brine. Um, you don't need to add the brine to it, so you just wanna go ahead and pull it out. Um, the one from Trader Joe's tends to be like a whole pepper, whereas um, the Menzada ones that we got at the grocery store are kind of already in strips. Just gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna add um, my two 14 ounce cans, or you can do one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes right into the pot. I wanna make sure it's good and mixed up. I don't really add too much more um, fluid to this because out of all honesty, the tomatoes and stuff are gonna make it really stewy and I, I felt that when I added more water, um, it was way too runny for my taste. So I don't tend to do that. So now I'm gonna add my Vegeta in, or my, um, my seasoning. I'm gonna put one tablespoon in. I'm gonna mix that up and make sure it's incorporated really well in here. Okay. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these meatballs I told you about and I'm gonna just throw those in and I wanna make sure they're kinda underneath all the vegetables, especially if you get frozen ones. These we thought out, but if they're frozen, you wanna make sure they're underneath those vegetables so that all that heat can be um, conducted underneath and then make sure that they get thawed out. I've never had a problem in all the times that I've used the frozen ones for them getting thawed out. But that's why I use the cooked ones. The last thing I'm gonna do is my bundle. 
I want to put that in there. I want to make sure it's covered too. So I'm going to tuck that thing in there. And then maybe, um, Sean, if you can lift the computer up so that you guys can see what it looks like inside before I put the lid on. See, there isn't much fluid in there, but everything's all stuffed down in there and everything's covered. Thank you, Sean. Okay, so now I'm going to press cancel on this. And now we're actually going to cook this guy. All right, I want to make sure that this is down. Is that down? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now we are going to go to custom and we're going to do four time, four minutes, right? Yep. We're going to go down to four minutes. And start. So it's going to take a few minutes for it to come to pressure, and then it's going to cook for four minutes. And then once it's done, um, you are going to do a um, quick release. Make sure you're very careful when you're opening it because there's going to still be a lot of steam in there. And once that's all done, then you can serve. Um, you can put this in containers and put it in the fridge and reheat it very easily. Um, if you don't put meatballs in it, you could eat it cold if you want, because everything's going to be, you could do a, a cold stew. Um, I prefer it warm, but whatever works for you. I hope you guys have a good evening. And tomorrow I will be doing another Facebook Live. I'll be doing my orzo salad. So hope to see you guys soon. Bye.